Hello. So today we're going to fix the BIOS of this um, QNAP TS-853. Um, right now it's completely dead. So it's if you, you can turn it on and the fans go full blast, but um, the unit won't start. There is no picture on the HDMI out and um, the USB ports are dead. So if you connect a keyboard or um, a USB drive or something, um, there is no activity at all. This behavior could either be um, a BIOS issue or um, the LPC clock bug, which um, this unit could be potentially um, be affected from it. Now to differentiate, in this case it's easy because I know that this unit died after uh, an update that failed, so it's a, the very likely suspect is the BIOS, but um, if that's not the case, um, you have to check the LPC clock and then yeah, basically, basically either um, put a pull up or pull down a resistor on the LPC clock line. But that's not the point of this video. We will be looking at the BIOS update. Now, there is a video from QNAP where they show you how to upgrade or upgrade your BIOS. But this video has some serious flaws. One, um, it assumes that you have a working unit that you want to upgrade. This is not the case with this one, so anything over a USB won't work. And B, they don't give you the files, which is, yeah. I mean, what this, which manufacturer of a main board doesn't give you BIOS update files? It's, it's stupid. So, um, to upgrade the BIOS, luckily QNAP gave us um, a header and we can use that one. Now, unfortunately, the header or the header is, is um, marked, that's nice, but it's not marked in a way or the pin number one on the header doesn't correspond to pin number one on the BIOS chip itself. And I made a, a pinout diagram, You can, I will show it on the screen, and um, we have to connect these to our USB programmer accordingly. Now, as a USB programmer, I will use this CH341A. These are very, very handy units. Um, they cost not much, I guess less than $10 shipped, and they are super, super handy. So if you watching this video, probably you are in need of one, so I'm sorry. If you don't, have this issue yet consider buying one because they are a life cycle. Yeah, so we need one of those and um, female to female, uh, how they're called, DuPont jumper cables or something like that. You can find these um, with like these making sites for Arduino and, and the like. Um, an alternative way to flash this SPI chip um, would be with a Raspberry Pi. You can consider that, but um, it's definitely easier with with these. So yeah, I will use that. Before you start um, flashing the BIOS chip, you want to um, remove the uh, BIOS battery because that could interfere with it and we don't need it for this time and uh, it would be reset anyways um, by flashing so it doesn't really matter. Now that the program is wired up we can start um, setting up our environment on the computer. Um, you want to make sure that this uh, programmer doesn't short out on any of these um, metal parts or on the board or anything, so I put it on the paper. That's good enough for now. 
So now that we have connected the programmer with the header, um, we have to look at the software side of this. Um, for the CH341, you need two pieces of software or drivers, if you will. Um, one is this this one, the other um, cell.exe, this one, and then we need um, the, uh, the flashing software itself. Um, there are many programs out there that could be used. I'm using this AS programmer um, from this GitHub here. It works pretty fine. Um, I will link or I will put the links in the description for the, um, the video. Um, so we're running this on a virtual machine, so it will be slower and not working as well, but it will do the job. Um, first you have to install these two, then unpack the, the, the zip archive, and then you can start your AS programmer. If this is the first time you're running um, the AS programmer, make sure that um, the CH341 is, um, is active here on the hardware. And if you connected up all, the, all of this, then you can um, go this, read ID. And if you have something like that, that's fine. That means it's um, it's found or it's correct uh, it's connected in the right way if you don't find it check, double check your um, connections you can select it and then go to read IC now as I said it's a virtual machine and for some reason it is very 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 slow um, if you're running this on bare metal it's probably or not probably it is a lot faster but anyways um, we want to read this and and then always save the starting or the, the original dump of the BIOS because if something does go wrong or anything um, it's still better than nothing. So um, we're done, the chip has been read and you can see it's it looks okay. -ish. I don't know what what happened here. Uh, anyways, um, now you want to um, uh, where is it? verify the, the IC. So that means um, basically read it again, compare it to what has been read before, and to make sure that the the, um, the data is correct. I won't do this because it literally takes like 20 minutes on this VM, and I'm not looking forward to it. But you should act really, really, you should do it. Um, after you have done that, you can save the original dump. Uh, do it on desktop. Name it whatever you like. I will name it dump zero. And um, or bin. And oh, okay, man, yeah. And you're done. So now that you have the original dump, we need the new file. And for that, it is helpful to know how this um, the newest BIOS is named. And it's this uh, QW37AR36. That's the newest version. Um, you can basically Google that uh, name, and you will find at some point this. Polish um, QNAP forum and you can download it there, you have to sign up. The reason for that is um, QNAP in their infinite wisdom decided to not put the BIOS files online for download, which is stupid beyond belief, but it is what it is. Um, apparently you can ask the customer service to send it to you, but it will probably take forever and you have to persuade them, and I don't know not ideal so we'll use this file here you can download it after um, you've been signed up and all that jazz and uh, i've done all that 
So I will open this file. It's that one here, that's from the, from the side. And then you can program the IC. This will also take quite a long time, so I won't do it on this machine, but um, all you have to do now is uh, hit that button and program the IC. And after that, it should work. Now that the uh, BIOS has been flashed, we can check it out. Um, HDMI is connected. Power is connected. Let's fire it up. And we have a picture, it's working. By pressing F2, by pressing F2, you can uh, enter the BIOS, and there you have to, you can change. Uh, like time and date and everything yeah if this video was helpful to you um, consider subscribing like share and all that jazz um, anyways i wish you goodbye and have fun with your working machine